So. Ja, wunderschönen guten Abend, liebe Coaches. Für den heutigen Montag haben wir Coach Jason Herdock, ähm, der einen Vortrag für die International Coaches Clinics halten wird. Ähm, Coach Herdock ist aktuell ähm, DC an der Clemens High School in Sugarland, Texas. Ähm, außerdem noch Athletic Coach ähm, an seiner Schule. Und ähm, Coach Haddock wird uns heute zum ersten Mal ähm, bei den Coaches Clinics etwas über Special Teams berichten. Er spricht über ähm, erfolgreiches, erfolgreiches Implementieren von Kickoff Returns und Punt Returns. Und ich bin wirklich gespannt, jetzt das erste Mal auch einen Coach zu hören, der über einen ganz, ganz wichtigen Part des Spiels sprechen wird. So, Coach Haddock, it's up to you. I'm excited to listen to your talk. Thank you so much. And, and let me start off again by saying thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm humbled to be able to, to speak with you guys today and, and try and share some of my passion for special team with y'all. Uh, let me just double check. You guys can see the screen that says Ranger kickoff return, punt return. Yes, we can see that. All right, great. We'll go ahead and get started. So I'm running this through Huddle and Huddle uh, wants to give fits from time to time. So I'm going to do my best here. So I'm going to start out with our philosophy for special teams. We really want to set the tone when we take the field. Um, special teams, a, a lot of people uh, don't want to give it a lot of credence. Just think, oh, get out there, kick the ball, catch the ball kind of thing and put the offense or the defense on the field. And, and you really have to, to pay attention because special teams truly is a, uh, a one third of the game. And, and special teams will, will win a game for you or lose a game for you if, if you don't get out there. So get out there, set the tone. And, and, and use that as an opportunity to take control of the game. We want to play fast and we want to be physical. And, and that's self-explanatory. Uh, your kids have to understand that this is not a playoff. Coach, I need a break. You can have a break on offense or defense. Darn it, you're going to get out there on special teams and you're going to give me 100%. And, and you're going to be fast and you're going to be physical. Um, returns put the offense in, a, in, in good field position. You know, that, that's, our, that's our goal. Put them in good field position. To me, a kickoff return or a punt return is not a special team or the last play of defense. It is the first play of offense. And our goal is to get that ball as close to or past the 50 as we can. Okay? And we want to make a difference in this return game. We want at least uh, a 30-yard punt return or a 45-yard kick return as our goal. Now, do we always attain that goal? No. But we want to set the bar high so that our kids understand this is what we really want out of you. This is what you guys can do. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, kickoff return. We're going to start with kickoff return today. This was uh, a kickoff return that we had in uh, NRG Stadium, which is where the Houston Texans play. We got to play a playoff game there several years ago. Um, now, you guys might notice I got a lot of yellow and black on here and then a lot of blue and white. Um, I was at Fort Bend Marshall. For four years, James Williams was my coach, and I'm very grateful to him for bringing me on staff. Uh, this past summer, I got the opportunity to go over to Clements High School, which is also in Fort Bend, um, for, for a promotion to defensive coordinator and assistant head coach. The head coach at Clements and I played college football together, so he, he said, come be with me. Let's make some changes around here and grow this program. And I was excited to, to do that. So we're going to see some back and forth at both schools, just uh, but everything still is applicable. So. All right, so kickoff return goals. We want 100% possession. At a minimum, you've got to possess the ball. We cannot give the ball up on kickoff return. We want to be 100% penalty free, you know, and penalties are easy to avoid. You block above the waist and in the face um, and, and no holding. We should be pretty good to go other than that. Um, we want our average drive to start at the minus 30 or better. You know, we can, we can, take the fair catch and, or, or take the kick in the end zone to bring us out to 25, but we want more than 25 yards. So we're looking for minus 30 or better every time. When your kids go out there, they have to know their job, know your assignment. And there are a lot of them, especially as you uh, introduce and teach multiple kickoff return uh, schemes. And, and, and we can't just go out there with one scheme. We've got to be able to go out there and be multiple every week and do multiple schemes. Another biggie is that you need to do your job. And I really emphasize your there. Do your job. If you miss a block because you're helping block somebody else, 
that your buddy should have blocked because you saw he didn't get him, then I'm, I'm going to get on both of you. You both missed your job. Do your job. And if somebody else messes up, we'll get on them. We'll correct them. But you have to do your job. And you have to finish your play. When you're dropping to your block, when you're making your block, if it's a double team, you have to finish that off. You can't just get to your block, tag the guy, and say, okay, he's blocked. It's not finishing the play. You have to finish the run. You've got to run hard, hit your gap, go vertical, and, and ultimately we'll want to score. And that is the ultimate finish of the play for us is scoring. These are just a couple of results. When I was at Marshall, my first year when I took over the return phase of our game, we had 41 returns for 616 yards. It's an average of 15 yards, no touchdown returns. The next year, 2016, they, they stayed about the same amount of returns, but our yardage went up, as did our average yardage, and we had one touchdown return that year. 2017, people realized, oh, these guys are fast, and they decided not to kick at us as much. Um, also, our defense was pretty good that year. So we only had 19 returnable kickoffs for 441 yards, but you would notice our average yardage per kickoff return went up, and we had one touchdown. We really had the culmination in 2018, um, 41 kickoff returns for 1,200 yards, 26.8 yard average, and six touchdowns uh, uh, off of kickoff returns. So it took several years for the kids to get into the system, to understand the system, to trust the system, and to buy in. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, and, and does it need to take four years? Not necessarily, but implement changes, get your system that you like, trust it, and the kids will come, and in a year or two, you'll start to see um, some positive results, and it's important to track this stuff, too, so you know for yourself, are we getting better? All right, scouting is very important. As a special teams coordinator, it was my job to look at the scout team film, uh, the scout film for the team that we're going to play. And things that you need to look for are things that are important, like where does the kicker line up? If he's kicking the ball in the middle, deep middle every time, and he's lining up 10 yards behind the ball every time, then that's easy. But if he lines up five yards back and five yards over, and it's a different kind of kick, you need to understand that. So how deep is he and how wide is he off of the ball? What kind of approach does he take? Does he run real fast to kick the ball? Does he take a slow approach? Is it direct or does he kind of weave as he's going and approaching the ball? Things like this will give away, especially at the high school level and a lot of times at the college level, will give away where the kicker is going to kick the ball. And if you as a coach scout that enough ahead of time and throughout the week you drill that into your players' heads so that they understand this is what I see because I've heard it from the coach. I've seen it in practice. I'm seeing it here in the game now. I know where the ball is going to go, and it gives you a great advantage. It lets you know where the kicker is going to kick the ball before he kicks it. I was very fortunate to have a kicker at Marshall that could approach the ball the same way from the same lineup every time and kick the ball wherever we asked him to, and, and that really makes it difficult for guys to scout you. All right, let's talk about our formation. So getting into the X's and O's. Our base formation for our kickoff return is a, is a six-man front with two returners, okay? Uh, we have our left and right tackles uh, on about the 47-yard line. The left and right guards just inside the hash at the same depth. Our left end and our right end, we have apex or split the difference between the guard and the tackle uh, five to seven yards behind them. Our left and right wings we put at about the 37 yard line. So another seven or so yards behind the ends and kind of split the difference between the tackle and the end. Our, our up back, our H, we put at about the 25 yard line and we put our two returners back behind him. Now, the alignment for these guys here in the back can change week to week depending on what the game plan is. Uh, but this is just, just strictly talking straight up base. This is how we're gonna look. We have our two returners, our off returner, and our primary returner. And, and this will change. Although I've got them labeled as that, really the job changes depending upon who's getting the ball. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So here's a look at the field. You've seen the diagram. Let's take a look at the field. Uh, we've got a look here from behind the kickoff return team. We have our tackle and guard and our end. 
tackle and guard in our end. Now you notice this right side is compressed a little bit more this week. We didn't need to spread everybody out evenly. So that's a small adjustment we can make week to week, knowing where they're going to kick the ball. Our wings are out here. Here's our H right here in the middle. And we have our two returners. Now, again, they're not evenly spread across the, uh, across the field in this picture. We know he's going to kick the ball over in this area more than likely. So we've adjusted to where we're assuming the ball is going to go. And, and again, the more film you watch on your opponent, the, the more educated of a guess you can make when you set this up. There are some areas of weakness uh, to this six-man front, and it's important that you not only know your strengths, that you know your weaknesses as well. Uh, I apologize for the, the, the font messing up. Huddle didn't like my import very much, but it still gets the point across. So let's talk about where we're weak. Right up the middle, zone one, if they dribble the ball, it's difficult for your guards to get flipped around and get back to the ball. Uh, and, and you have a, a large no-man's land right there in the middle that really needs to be covered quickly. Uh, staying down the middle, looking at zone four, if they go to squib the ball, uh, if they go to squib kick uh, and they're kicking right down the middle uh, and, and it hangs in that no man's land, you've got people running back, people running up, and they're coming full speed. Or they can power squib it. They can, you know, knuckle ball it, kick it real hard along the ground, and, and it make the H try and field the ball. And if the ball hops and the H misses it, it's difficult for us. We have zone number two on both sides behind the tackles, and it's the pooch zone. Uh, you know, we tell our guys up front, don't back up to catch a ball. If you have to back up to catch a ball, somebody behind you will catch it. Let them field the ball and you block for them. Uh, and, and if there's a miscommunication or somebody's not paying attention, that ball can hang in the air and drop in that pooch zone. And, and at that point, it becomes a live ball and it's difficult for us to get on. And finally, our, our zone three, our high pooch zone. If the ball is high and deep like that and hangs between the wing and the returner. It's difficult for the wing to get flipped around and get back. Uh, and it's difficult for the returner to come up. They have to communicate as well. And I've got some film where guys didn't communicate and hurt us. They've got to communicate as well. Who's going to get the ball? And if they don't talk, if it's loud and they can't hear each other, that's a soft zone. So it's a zone that you have to practice communicating and have to practice uh, in, in, against these guys. You've got to throw these kinds of kicks at your return kids and practice every week so that they know where their weaknesses are and they know how to cover them up. All right, so the uh, cover team identification. Who do we have? It's really important that we're able to look at the cover team and see who we've got, okay? So uh, a 5v5, five five, a 5-5 five five kick is where we're going to have five on either side. We've got the kicker in the middle, and we number our, uh, our opponent from the outside in on the cover team. Left side, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. Same thing on the right side and the kicker in the back. So here we've got a diagram describing, showing it, and, and actually looking at it here on, on uh, a clip from film as well. Count them out, one, two, three, four, five, kicker. Right side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've gotta be able to identify our guys. Now, not everybody lines up five and five and kicks the ball. A lot of times you'll get people that want to do something different like a four and six alignment or a six and four alignment. So if we come out, see a four and six alignment, cover team comes out one, two, three, four, there's their kicker. Technically, this guy, even though it is a six-man front, technically this guy is L5. He is still the fifth man. They have just swapped. Okay, so by maintaining a consistency in numbering, you maintain a consistency for your kids and what their job is. So if a guy knows, hey, I have L5, I just have to find him. Ignore the kicker, count left to right, one through five, that's my man. And we'll see the same thing as well if we get a 6-4 six, uh, six with the kicker on, on our right hash. Uh, one, through, one through five, L5. And then this is the sixth man, but really this man is the R5. He and the kicker have swapped. Okay, obviously, we're probably going to be able to guess where the ball is going to go. And if we scout it well, we'll know that. One, two, three, four, ignore the kicker. There's R5. So, again, it's important to keep the numbering the same, keep the numbers consistent, even if you're swapping one or the other with the kicker. It's also important that you as a coach know 
you can't have more than six guys on one side of the kicker. And if the kicker goes to line up and he walks off and ends up here between three and four on one side, you better be in the official's ear and let him know that's an illegal formation. They can't kick it that way and, and, and get the penalty. It's a small rule, but it's something that's extremely important for you as a special teams coordinator to know. All right, so let's, let's talk about scheme a little bit. Now, I've got – here I've got kick it to me, kick it to me. It's important that your returners want the ball. They have got to be hungry to eat up yardage and to get some – to get some – uh, to get grass to get out there in space. All right, we use a cross scheme for our kickoff return uh, with our front six. We're really going to ignore one and two on the left and on the right as those cover guys are coming down. They're out here. Chances of them squeezing in and making a big difference are not going to be there. Again, scout it. If they have a somebody at one or two, that's really the dude and you need to make an adjustment to block him, by all means, do that. But our base coverage, our base block is going to be, we're going to kick out three, four, and five on either side. And I've got opposite colors, black and white here, to show that we're going to have an overlap. You can decide as the coach which side you want to go in front and which side you want to go behind. I like to let my left side go in front. This left guard is going to come in front. This right guard is going to come behind him. Never, and they understand if I'm on the left, I'm in front. If I'm on the right, I'm behind. I have had kids run into each other before. They were not on the field very long for me after that. Okay. Our wings are going to, uh, all assuming that the ball is kicked in the middle, are going to turn and sprint back to the H and get close. Now, this is not setting a wedge. We are not holding hands. We are not close enough to touch. But ultimately what we're doing is we're clearing out the middle and then we're allowing the left and right wing to pick up the first opposite colored jersey they see. We're going to work our way up the middle, all three of us, and we're going to peel off and pick off anything we see that slips through. The H is doing the same thing. Once he gets set, we're set, we're going to go clear the middle out. Pick off opposite colored jerseys. Our primary returner, catch the ball, run the ball, okay? Our off returner is going to Follow the H and lead for the primary returner and, again, be a pickoff guy. If somebody comes through an opposite color, let me pick them off and get rid of them. Primary returner, it, I said catch the ball, run the ball. It, it's a little bit more complicated than that. A lot of times if you can give a stem to one side and then go vertical, you'll overset the kickoff team uh, on their coverage, and they're going to create vertical lanes. Ideally, as the returner, you want to get vertical as fast as you can. You don't want a lot of side to side. So get in, get vertical, and go. Okay, so this is our deep scheme. This is our uh, one deep scheme. Here we've got a kick coming at us, and you're going to see, uh, and I'm going to try, I'm going to try and, and not go too fast with this so that the video is not too choppy. You're going to see the kids turn. They're turning and they're going to cross. You can see he's on a shallower path. And this guy's on a little bit of a deeper path because they're going to have to cross each other. Okay, the ball came all the way over here to this side. So we've got to make an adjustment. We've got to get back in the middle. As you can see, we've got guys that are walling off here. We've got guys that are walling off here. And we have a wing and an H that are getting up in here to start picking off color. We had to pick off a, a one out here with our off returner, and that's fine. Follow your blockers. It's extremely important as the returner. Follow your blockers. Find that vertical seam, get vertical. If you get through as a blocker, you're, you're leading up, and this is, I think this is my right wing right here. He's leading up, and he's nobody for him to pick up. Now he's got a kicker to pick up. Okay, he's got the kicker to pick up. He picks him up. And that opens the seam for our returner to go vertical. This kid's got to have some speed. You can't put a kid back there that runs a five flat 40. It doesn't matter who you have up front blocking for him. It's not going to be a returnable ball uh, most of the time. So make sure you've got your fast kids in the back that can make good decisions, get vertical, and outrun guys when the path is clear for you. Also make sure your kids know if they're running behind the ball, don't touch anybody. We don't need any stupid penalties. 
I'll take a look real quick at the end zone version of this. Um, again, you see we're set up six and six, got our H a little bit more to the right. Uh, and, and that was just an adjustment that we had for the week. Ball ends up going to the other side, but you see our kids are dropping. You see they're dropping, you see their turn, you see they're coming, and we're going to cut off. So now we have a wall right here. And we're picking kids off. We've got a wall right there, but we've got lead blockers out of our wings and our H. You see that opening. We've got a lot of field here to run. Get vertical in that thing and go. And we're, we're fortunate our kicker there, or our returner there, excuse me, a great young man that went to play at Tulsa, uh, was able to get in for a touchdown. This was a Saturday game against Mamble. Again, you can see our kids are – I'm going to pause it right before the kick. I've got one kid starting to leave a little early, but one, two, three, and four, these four guys right here up front have not moved. They've got to wait till the ball is kicked. They know, and I've drilled it into them, wait until you see the ball leave the tee. Here's a great job of our wings and our H getting together. Uh, this is my off returner, actually getting together my wing was a little late but we've created a wall here and we're starting to create a wall here and we've got some blockers there in the middle follow your blockers use your speed okay he got chased down from behind i personally think if he'd have broken out here he keeps running vertical you've got a guy right there man you got all this space out here use it if he breaks out and gets behind that guy to keep going, then, man, we've got a touchdown there. Get through some of these extra clips. Uh, and this was a great one we had against Willow Ridge. We knew this kid was going to kick the ball down the middle. We knew it was going to be a nice, high, returnable ball. My wings and my H do a great job of getting together to clean everything up. Now, did we have to make a couple of late blocks here? Absolutely. And we'll talk about block technique here shortly. But all I've got to do is get that block just in enough time. Ideally, your kicker has one guy to miss, and that guy is – or your returner, and that guy is the kicker. Here's my returner. Here's the kicker. I've got to make a move and make him miss. So I stem him. I go opposite, turn on the speed, and go, and we end up getting a touchdown out of this one as well. Okay, so I've talked about taking multiple schemes into the game. Uh, we've got our, our middle return. But what happened was we started running a lot of balls back, and people said, oh, I'm not going to kick to them anymore. So they were kicking it either out of bounds on us or they were pooch kicking it to us. At that point, it was time to bring in our pooch kick scheme. So the kids practice this scheme every week, just like we practice our regular scheme, and they have to know what we're going to run based upon how the ball leaves the tee. We're either going to run our called return or we're going to ha have a pooch kick and run our pooch return. Okay. They've got to see the ball off the tee. It's extremely important for them to do that. Um, when we end up running our pooch return, uh, you, you can see it changes the drop for your front, uh, your, your front three guys over here. Now, this is assuming that the ball is pooched to the left wing. The, the tackle guard and end on the pooch side have to change their drop. They're going to open outside instead of opening inside the cross drop. The opposite side guys are still coming in their cross drop motion, but they're going to end up kicking in and kick in, turn in to kick these two out. Your H and your right wing are going to pick up uh, the R5. Um, the returner away from the pooch is just going to come pick up the most dangerous guy, most dangerous man, MDM. Who's the first threat leaking through that I need to pick up? The off returner is going to get up here and secure the catch. That means you need to make sure that the left wing catches the ball. If he muffs it, if it goes over his head because he didn't drop appropriately, secure the ball, get down, we'll take the yardage. Okay, but once I secure the catch and make sure that that left wing has it, I'm going to block on his backside because he's coming away from L1. I'm going to get out here and block for him. By doing this, we actually open up two potential lanes for our guy. If, if, we're, if we've got an L5 that's, that's adjusted wrong, we can get skinny behind this guard and come off of his butt going uh, vertical. Or if we end up kicking L5, we can vertically stem and then bounce. And that vertical stem will help draw guys over. You vertically stem, bounce, come behind the guard's block, and go vertical again. OK, 
Okay, so we ended up having, uh, we played against a team called Sterling. Sterling did not want to kick deep to us. They wanted to pooch kick to us every time. So again, by scouting ahead of time, I can tell this guy is about two and two off the ball. He's facing where he's going to kick the ball. I know where the ball's going. So we flipped our pooch return for the week. We didn't have to change guys. They just knew what their responsibility was because we coached it up throughout the week. So he kicks this ball nice and short. I did not like the uh, I did not like my wing backing up for this ball. I really could have had the returner uh, to field this ball, but the wing fielded it. You've got the uh, the returner securing the ball. He's making sure that the wing is going to get it, and then he's going to go help block. Here he goes to block number one. I've got other guys I can get behind, and I'm just going to find this ended up being the wider uh, lane for him to return. Now, what I don't like is that instead of making a move on the kicker, he decided to slow down and then lets the kicker catch him. If he stems that kicker, if he goes vertical on the numbers to stem him and then bounces, you've got a lot more grass out here. You'll run around this guy. But that right there puts the offense uh, on the plus 35, plus 36, and it's real easy for them. You know, percentages say we're going to get in at that point. A little bit later in the game, they decided that they wanted to push kick to us again. Okay, that's fine. It went a little deeper this time. So my returner that's supposed to be securing the catch, hey, it's too deep for the wing. I've got it. Now the wing's going to go block one. They've just changed jobs. Simple job exchange right there. And here we're going to get a little bit of a skinnier return. We've got guys kicked. We've got guys sealed. We can get vertical here. Make a move. Fellas, your, your, your returner has got to make a move on the kicker. We can't just go vertical uh, and, and then wait for the, the one guy standing there to trip us up. Again, this was another missed opportunity for a touchdown. Puts the offense on the plus 40. That's a great uh, return and great field position. And as the, as the special teams coordinator, I'm not overly happy with this because I know we could do better. Sometimes the ball gets that high push, very short, very high sky kick. And it's important to understand if anybody on the, the return team waves fair catch, it is a catchable ball for us. And, and that's a conversation that you need to make sure you, you remind the officials of early in the game. Okay. Uh, that clip is coming up here in a little bit. Um, so again, my wings catching the ball, my returner is securing the kick and then going to block. Run away from the other color, get behind your blockers. We did not seal off this backside very well. Here we've got guys just running free down. And, and the problem is, is my pooch side guys, these three guys right here were not paying attention when the ball was kicked, and they started running their cross drop and realized too late. If these guys pay attention to the kick of the ball and end up running the pooch return like they're supposed to. We end up doing a lot better than what we do we still are able to make something out of this. Get vertical behind color, puts the offense on the minus 47, still a pretty good, uh, or uh, uh, 42, still a pretty good uh, field position for them. Okay. So the technique for the front six, guys, stance. The shoulders need to be square with the inside foot back, so the left side will have the right foot back and vice versa. To drop, you've got to kick step and open your hips. You actually need to open your hips, 45 degree angle uh, from where you were square and, and go. Extremely important is vision. You have to have your eyes on the kicker to watch his approach because you've been coached on that all week long and see the ball leave the tee. And we had just saw an example of guys that were not watching the kicker and not watching the ball off the tee ran the wrong return because they weren't paying attention. See the ball leave the tee, all right? While you're dropping, Okay, ball leaves the tee. While I'm dropping, find your man. All right, I counted out L3. That's number 40. Okay, I see number 40. I see what he looks like. I see the number on his jersey. I watch the kick go. I'm now I'm going to run to drop. I'm going to find number 40 again. Drop fast. Don't drop slowly or try and match his speed. Drop fast, and then you can adjust your block. Now, at the best, we're going to get a hard block. You come, you block, you lock up, you drive him out of the middle, drive him towards the sideline. At the worst, we just need to get in his way, all right? And we've seen a couple of examples of that where it was a very late block and the blocker got there right before the ball did. And, and it's just like screening him off in basketball. 
just get in the way at the absolute worst. Cushion kills speed. Get a deeper drop, get more cushion, and then you can adjust. If you've got a fast guy coming down, down the field, if I've got a deeper drop, it gives me the cushion to adjust to pick him up, okay? We've got to seal the middle. It's absolutely imperative that your guys know that the no man's land is from hash to hash. Okay, so we're going to do a drop drill. Again, inside foot back, we're going to kick slide to drop open the hips. We want to be very fast at the beginning of the return, and then we can slow down as we adjust to our block. Eyes on the ball and square till it's kicked. Onside kicks. And what we work onside kicks, I've got some video on that. You have to plant your foot. You have to drive on the ball. You can't keep dropping. In fact, if you're watching the ball off the tee properly, you might only take a step back to plant your foot and go. All right, always know the game plan for the week and how it affects your drop because it's going to change week to week. So right now what I have lined up is I have my uh, guard tackle and end from the right side. And this is stuff you can do in the spring. This is stuff you can do without pads. This is stuff we did during the week as well. Notice the ball. I tell them, hey, the ball's away, and they all kick step. They all kick step vertically and then open their hips to run. They're going to run to go kick number one, uh, five, number four, number three. That tell them to run their feet. When they are done, I blow the whistle and reset them. Again, coming from the same side. First step is going to be a kick step. Then they open their hips. Kick step and open your hips. Okay. Now, my right tackle here is not giving me a lot of fast effort out front. These guys are running. He's jogging. He's loafing. He knows his block might be a little bit deeper. You've got to be fast to start, and then you can slow down to adjust. So I'll run one side a couple of times. Boom, 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 line up. Here we go. Okay, done. Move on. Then we'll do the other side. So this is my left guard tackle and end. We know that these, are, these guys are going first. Their drop is a little more shallow, so they don't need to kick step. They can just open up because they're having a little bit shallower of a drop. This guy's got more of a line, and then it bows out from that. Fast to slow to adjust. Fast to slow to adjust. Good speed on the backside, fast. Now he's starting to slow down to adjust to his block. So after we've gone right side and left side a couple of times, and, and you can go one side multiple times, you can go back and forth, we want to do whole group. So I've got all six guys out here. Uh, tackle in and guard left, uh, right, tackle in and guard left. They're square. They know the ball's here in the middle. They're square to the line. You see good kick step. You see good drops. One in front, one in back, one in front, one in back. Ideally, we're opening up uh, no man's land down the hash, and that's how they, uh, they are set up. We over-exaggerate getting to the hash and opening the hash in practice so that when they get there in a game, they're absolutely on target. So we'll run whole group a couple of times as well. And it's going to take more drilling the earlier in the season, the earlier in the install that you've got. You'll get to the point where you can run this two or three times and then move on. You know, they're going probably about 30, 40 yard sprint right here. It shouldn't take the wind out of them too bad. All right, this is a great look at our cross drop. This is a great look at our cross drop. This ended up, ended up being a touchback. Even though that ball is gone and sailed and these five guys can see it, my guys up front are still working the block, still working the block, still working the block. Here we go. The ball's already gone, and I've got a guy right here still working the block. And it's important that you guys understand we have to work to block uh, and, and get our block until that ball is gone. Sit and wait. Ball's off, balls, balls off the tee right there. Nobody's moved. All right, now we're taking steps to kick step and drop. Again, ball's in the end zone, but I've got guys still working the block over here. Okay, now drop adjustments. All of that that we've shown so far is assuming they kick the ball down the middle. All right, now, now what if they kick it deep left or deep right? We can't just open up the middle between the hashes and expect to bend that ball back in. We, the blockers up front need to make the adjustment, and it changes the middle of our field. The ball is kicked deep left. Instead of our lane being hash to hash, we're going to slide that lane to the side. Our lane's now going to be bottom of the numbers to the hash or deep right, same thing. 
If we get any short kicks, anything shallow, uh, we have to be shallow and fast to drop through the block, okay? Vertical drops, flipping our hips, driving on the play side, okay? If it's an onside kick, plant drive forward towards the ball, cover it up. We can't advance it. Don't pick it up. Get on the ball. Cover your guy that's on the ground. Make sure he's safe and the ball is secure. All right, so this was my great kicker that I had a couple years ago. His approach was the same, whether it was going to be deep or short. And here's practicing a short ball. That ball goes off the tee, and these guys are – he's already opening up to the ball. He's stepping forward. He's stepping forward, driving to the ball. All three of them are moving to the ball. I don't like that he trips, but he uh, – my left tackle there still secures the ball. Cover up the guy, cover up the guy. And you see that my right guard here gets there and covers him up, gets in front of him to protect him. <coughs> Excuse me. Cover up the ball, cover up the ball, cover the man up. If we can't get it, somebody else has got to get it. We've got to be aware and ready for that ball to slip out. And that happens here. The left tackle is not able to secure the ball. He doesn't get on the ground. The left guard is able to jump on it. And then the right guard here covers him up. Get on it, cover him up, make sure he's got the ball and he's down. We're good to go. You have to practice these kicks for your kids. Have to. So earlier I mentioned sky kicks and, and Colin, uh, this was a Colin fair catch. This was a playoff game for us, first round playoff game. Uh, and the kicker kicks the ball almost straight up. Now, when he does, I'm going to go real slow. I had something real smart happen out of this young man right here. This young man right here called for a fair catch. Okay, if that ball's going to land in the front six, I want to see somebody's arm go up and make that fair catch call. Okay, because now I'm going to catch the ball. Even though it's another guy catching the ball, he gets hit. I'll show you guys the tight version. It's a little bit better. We get ball off the tee here, and you can see it right there. Hand in the air, fair catch, right there. Catch the ball, game, uh, you know, plays over. And we get we catch the ball, and he gets whacked. Number one, he hangs on to it. Number two is the uh, field judge comes in right here. We can see him throw the flag. So not only did we get great field position, we got a penalty as well. Uh, and that helped out putting the offense in the positive yards, okay? So your guys have to understand if the ball is going to be in the front six, throw that hand up, catch the ball. That's it. Throw the hand up, catch the ball. If you get whacked, you get whacked, but hang on to that sucker. This was a playoff game that was back and forth against Huntsville several years ago, and uh, the young man that made our final winning touchdown is playing for Illinois right now. Uh, and the quarterback is going to play for Arkansas. Um, but we had a kickoff right here. We weren't sure what they were going to do, and I remember this. I'm sitting there on the sideline looking at the kicker going, that's not the normal kicker. That's not the number of the guy that I'm expecting to kick the ball. And right as this guy stepped out, I saw that was the kicker that had slid in. So, again, as you're scouting, know who the guys are. Here he comes. And my kids are ready. They see the ball is coming this way. They're already starting to move. Very fortunate that we get that ball covered up right there. But this is a great clip because it really shows some of the things that other teams can do. They can try and hide that kicker somewhere else. A couple of years ago uh, at a school I was at, we had two kickers. One was a righty, one was a lefty, and they were both on kickoff return or on kickoff. So the returners didn't know where the ball was coming from. We were able to do a lot of fun stuff with that. But you got to be ready. We saw that guy approaching. We started making the adjustment right now. Here we come. Ball's off the ground. Let's go cover it up. That was a, that was a heck of a game. That game was a lot of fun. All right, so that's the front end. Let's talk about the back end real quick, and we'll move on to punt return. Okay, pre-kick. Pre we've got to look at the alignment of the kicker, and we've got to see the ball off the tee in the back as well. The H has got to drop towards the ball and towards the primary returner, the guy that was going to catch it. We want a 10-yard cushion between the H and the returner. The left and right wings have got to drop to flank the H. And if the ball is kicked to the corner or outside of the hash, we want to set up two yards outside of the hash as that new middle. Like I said, bottom of the numbers to the hash becomes our new middle lane. All right? The H and the wings are going to sit there until that off returner gives them a go call, and then they're going to go clear the middle out. Find something that's in another color, clear it out, get, get it out of the way. 
Okay, so I've got my wings, my H, and my two returners. And again, this is great stuff you can do uh, without a, if you have time where you gotta work without a ball, I can tell them, hey, I'm kicking the ball over here, I blow the whistle, they start dropping. He knows, we know this is the returner, the H is setting up, the wings are coming to flank, and the off returner is gonna secure. I make sure he catches the ball, I look at him, I see he catches the ball, then I can come turn up and play. And we go vertical, we spread out, we open up. Again, all without a ball, all in cloth, but we can do this. So this time we're gonna go, go do it to the other side. I tell him, hey, you're getting the ball, I just pointed at him. All right, ball's getting kicked to, to our deep right. He catches the ball, I make sure that he catches it, I secure that, ta uh, that, that catch and then I'm going to block. I see he's got it, waiting for that go call, flanking, coming to flank, let's clear out the middle. And you've got a wall of, of color you can run behind. Then we add a ball in. <clears throat> you don't know where it's coming, ball's coming, catch the ball, make the appropriate drop, go, 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 and we can return it. We end up throwing to the other side, Ball gets a little bit wide and we don't adjust properly. My wing is not paying attention. He doesn't adjust properly based off of the kick, based off where the ball is going. The H has got to be faster to get there. This wing is doing a good job trying to catch up. But we're not set up properly here. These guys here ought to be over here and in front and it makes him have to work to get back underneath his blockers. So I'm not exactly happy with that one, and we make the adjustment. Same thing. Now it's a little bit short. What happens when it's short? I told the H not to back up. Well, he didn't, okay? Ball came directly to him. Now, instead of him being a blocker, both of the returners are going to get out front, and they're going to lead. The wings still do their job of kicking out, and this guy with the ball can now go vertical. Okay, your guys have got to understand, they've got to expect that ball to come. It's a playoff game here for us. I want you to watch my off returner right here. We knew they were going to kick to this side, so we set both of our returners to this side. And you get a little bit better look on the tight version. It's kind of grainy here, but he is telling him, stay. Okay, it is the off returner's job to secure the catch. Part of that is knowing when we don't want to bring the ball out of the end zone. And I'm going to tell that primary returner, stay, stay, stay. And here's a little bit better look at it on the tight. So here he is right here. Uh, Tone's going to play at U of H this year. Um, did a great job at Kilgore Junior College. And he's telling him, stay, stay, stay. Stay, take that knee. We're not bringing it out. That's very, very smart football right there. You've got to drill your guys on that. Get the wide here. Do I, am I missing the wide? I must be missing the wide. That's okay. Primary returner catching the ball. Here's the H looking. Here's the off returner ready to go. Here's the wing coming. Get there and clear out. Follow your blocker. Follow your blocker. Stay behind your blocker. He ducked out from behind his block here. If he stays behind his block here, we get some more yardage, but he, wants, he decides to duck out, go the other way, and he gets picked up. Follow your blocker. Stay behind your blocker. Cross dropping up front here is excellent. You can see the left side is going in front. The right side is going behind. The ball dropped to this guy so right here. This guy's going to make sure we secure the cash. And then he's going to go block. Perfect. I have four guys, my H, my wings, and my off returner now, all blocking. Problem is we don't follow our block. Here's your lead blocker, stay with him. Don't decide, oh, I can come out here and do my own thing. Do what your coach to do. Because if he stays with them, maybe we find this seam right here and we can get out and go vertical. Okay, I'm not happy with the ball being on the 36 and we could have gotten 15 more yards or scored. Another example, follow your blocker. Great cross blocking right here except for my two guards who are almost running into each other. This is early in the season. Got to communicate. Who's going to catch it? You two knuckleheads have got to communicate and make sure you know who's catching who's blocking. We've got a good wedge up here. 
but we're not pushing it. And it's because we're late to the game with the ball because we didn't communicate in the back. You got to communicate, got to follow your blind. All right, so that's all I've got on kickoff return. Um, if you guys want to ask questions, feel free to jump in at any time or we can just save them all till the end. Uh, our punt return scheme, this is uh, our second return that we had uh, in the game at Energy Stadium. Uh, College Station is going to punt. Excuse me, AM Consolidated is going to punt. And, uh, and we've got our kid back there that's uh, that wanted to play for Tulsa. And all you got to do is, is vertical stem. He vertical stems, it slows these guys down, and then he gets outside and turns a corner on them. Uh, we've got blockers picking guys up. He's working to come back and block. We're get, working to get out front to lead. We're knocking their guys into their other guys. That's a two-for-one block. I'll take that right there. Block him, go into the house. Um, and, and it's great when you're in an NFL stadium or a stadium of that size. Some of the, so the, the soccer stadiums that you guys have over there, uh, are, are huge. It, it's so cool when the kids get to go score in a stadium like that. This is the end zone version. And you can really see how we've got around the corner and we, we start picking up blocks. Pick up a block there, pick up a block there. Use your blockers. Corey does a great job. Right here, he gets up the sideline and stems back in and then back out, and it gives the chance to get a block on the kicker. Anytime you can stem the return, the, the punt team, we want to try and do that. That was a heck of a game. Our punt return goal is two things. Number one, we must possess the ball. This is the first play of offense. We can't fumble the ball. Number two, we've got to be penalty free. Okay? Nothing, uh, no blocks behind the ball, everything above the waist, in the face, uh, and no holding calls. Okay? Punt return philosophy, know your assignment. Again, beat your opponent. A lot of times punt return to me is a one-on-one -on -one battle with you and the guy across from you. Who's going to win? Who will win? Do you step up and say, I've got this guy beat. I'm going to beat him. Or do you look at him and go, oh, man, he's going to whip me. And finish the play. Um, uh, blocking the kick, holding up, screening off guys, returning, whatever our call is that week or that play, we need to make sure that we finish it. Scouting, okay? What formations do you see? Are they in a shield punt? Are they in a spread punt? Are they in a tight punt? What do you see out of them, and, and what are their personnel doing? Down and distance situations are important, and that's going to determine if we're going to go block the ball, if we want to do a hold-up so we can try and get a return, or if there's going to be a chance of fakes. Even if you haven't seen your opponent run a fake, as you're scouting them, what fake could they run? Okay, Maybe they could run some sort of something out of the, out of the backfield with one of the, the shield blockers. Well, let me practice that against my kids just so they know this could be a fake that you're going to see. And then punt placement. Do you have a punter that can place the ball? Or is it just a kid that's catching the ball and trying to get rid of it as fast as he can and he's inconsistent? So, so charting where the ball is going to go when it's kicked uh, from the punter is really important so that you know where they're trying to place that ball. Okay, so – we have two main techniques, our hold-up and our block, and our, our hold-up really doesn't change week to week, okay? So against our, our shield punt here, we've got uh, the offense lined up in a shield punt, the punt team all in black, and, and I've numbered my guys, okay? I, I tend to take my, my defensive linemen off for linebacker, running back, tight end type bodies. I like to leave my secondary guys on there, I leave my corners, leave one of my safeties as my returner, um, or a Pull, pull a guy for the returner if I need to, okay? We always want to do two things. We want to check the fake and force the punt. Uh, and I like forcing from one side so that we don't have guys running into each other. So this is my fast force guy. He's going to go like he's going to block. Uh, and he's going to force the punter to make sure he punts, not hold the ball. The opposite guy from him is checking the fake. I'm coming. I'm getting got by the line. I'm stepping up, and I'm holding here. You are not going to roll out on me. If you do, I'm going to make a tackle here. I'm going to make you quick, quickly kick the ball and make a mistake. Other than that, the, everybody here is linebacker depth, and we're going to stem up or back, but ultimately we're going to get up, and I'm going to pick these guys up. Uh, my three and my six and my eight are down in a three-point stance. They're driving off into this guy, and we'll talk about technique here in just a second. Um, I've got to understand we can't touch the center right away. Okay, we've got to let him snap, lift his head, 
and either block or, or release downfield. And I use one of my linebackers to pick him up. Okay, one linebacker will pick up the guard because we're going to pick up up backs. This other linebacker will pick up the center. Ideally, your returner's got one guy to miss, and that's going to be one of these guys where the punter back here. That's our scheme for holdup. So we've got two different stances. Um, uh, on the line, these guys are going to be in a three-point track stance. Three-point stance, ready to go, ready to explode out into the punt, uh, punt team. Uh, if I'm out in an extended position, if they have a spread punt or, or one or two wide, uh, I'm going to be out here in a two-point stance. I like being square. This is almost a man press technique for corners. I like that stance because it allows you to go both ways. If you have one foot cocked back or if you're turned, it limits your ability to move. Okay, hold up technique is extremely important. When you're in that three-point stance, you want to step and drive with your eyes on the inside number, okay? Drive into the protector and settle. So you're going to drive into him. As he starts to settle into his kick step, you're going to drive into him, and I'm going to punch with my thumbs up, my hands up, and my elbows in, and I'm going to lock into him. Now, I, I like to say use the steering wheel. That chest plate on the guy in front of the guy's power, uh, pads is just like a steering wheel. You lock into that thing, grab that with your thumbs up, and wherever you turn that wheel, you can drive him. Ideally, with hold up, this is a middle uh, return kind of kind of return. So we want to reroute this guy to the sideline. So I want to turn him outside and and route him that way. Now I can't hold on to him the entire time, but I can really slow him down and really reroute him by winning with my feet. As I punch and I settle into him and I settle into a lower stance. If he wants to move to his left, I'm going to move my feet, staying in that low stance and drive him that way. If he wants to move inside, I'm not going to let him turn that wheel, use my feet, drive him to the outside. Win it with your feet because you can't win it by holding him that you're going to get a penalty. Okay, so uh, this is a half line drill. We work the left half, we work the right half, we go back and forth, and then we do full group. And I'm just doing a little demo here for my kids. So you can see these are, this is a locked up linebacker. This is a corner. These are two down linemen. We're in half shell here. And on the whistle, we get the snap. Well, we get a simulated snap. Excuse me. We use a simulated snap. Get used to that. Hey, I get into the guy. And, and we don't get a great set. We want to reroute this guy outside to the sideline. And we end up letting him get inside of us. And I don't like that. Okay. But what I do like is I'm going to get back on track. I'm going to get inside of him. And now I can work him outside. Uh, Lawrence right here gets into his man. Routes him outside, stay with him outside, keep him outside of him. Left side's resetting, right side up. Here we go. Simulated snap, that center doesn't have to move. Get your simulated line to kick step and release. Okay, this guy's at depth. My outside man here in the yellow is forcing the punt. So I'm going to sit and wait. This guy releases. Hey, we're going to stay inside hip. We're going to stay inside hip and run with him down the field. I want to stay on his inside hip. I don't even have to touch the guy. If I'm on his inside hip, shoulder to shoulder, and I can stay with him, we've got him blocked. Okay, so again, we go left side up, and then right side up. Get into him, turn him, get him outside, work him outside, stay with him. Make sure that your scout guys understand they need to go hard here. This can't just be uh, rest time for them during practice. left side up, right side up, then we go whole team. Okay, I get a simulated snap out of my center. He waits. And we get a whole team hold up, turn guys outside. Don't let them slip back inside on you. I don't like this. We've got a technique to deal with that. It's coming up in just a second. Bring them back, go whole team again. And you can do this in clock. You don't have to have shoulder pads on to do this kind of stuff. One of the things that I notice here is that we've got a guy that lets let the opponent get inside of him, right? If you get beat inside, you have to get into a trail position. So what I'm showing him here is, hey, I'm in a trail position. I'm going to use my backside hand to reach across to his hip, and I'm going to pull myself through. I'm going to slingshot myself through. And that's a technique that we're going to talk about here in just a second. Once I slingshot myself, if you reach and pull low, the officials are not going to call that. When you reach and pull on his shoulder pads, they're going to call that. If you reach to his hip, Pull low, pull yourself through, and slingshot through. Uh, you're going to be in a good position. So here we have hold up. We've got guys that 
are walking up. I like to give my linebackers some freedom to walk up and walk back as long as they do their job. I changed my force guy this week. It wasn't my outside guy. It was one of my inside guys. Okay, now the ball here ends up being not a ball that's returnable, but our guys do a pretty good job of getting off, getting into the line right here. Okay. Okay, so hold up technique. We've got a technique called cloud wheel. These are the guys that were not down on the line. These are the guys that are a little bit further back. Uh, we want to be inside shade of that guy. I want to force him to have an outside release, okay? And it's like playing an off-man press um, to pressure to try and get him to go outside. We want to force him to release outside, okay? And what you can see right here is the kicking team is kicking away from the screen towards the scoreboard. I'm inside in his hip. I'm inside in his hip, and I'm working them outside because here's my returner. And by sealing these guys out, I've created a lane for my returner to come work here. All right, so again, these are drills that you can do in cloth. You can be out of cloth to do this. I, I like the two-point stance because it allows you to be in a good stance. I don't like this back posture, but it allows you to open up and stay in the hip. Open up. Stay inside, put your hand on the inside of his hip, and run with him. Run him outside to the, to the sideline. And we go again. Now, this is one of our starters. This is a young man that's uh, going to play, uh, play football and run track in college. He's a fast kid. You want to get good guys to run scout for you that are going to work your, your punt returners. So we'll do it again. Let him try and play up front. He's going to dance a little bit up here. Stay square. And when he opens his hips, open yours, and you can run with him. Got a great example of this here. Uh, and this is the shot that we just saw from the end zone. Looking at this guy to start with. Right here, locked up here, and then looking at my man right here. The ball is going to snap and look out here first. I'm staying square. I'm going to stay inside. He opens his hips. I open my hips. Stay inside of him. My guy right here comes up. Hey, here he goes. He's outside. Open my hips. I've locked into him at this point. Now I'm using his momentum. I'm driving him to the sideline. I'm going to keep taking him. Plays over, and I am blocking the heck out of this guy. I absolutely love this effort. I love this determination. This kid is mean and angry, and you got to have that on your team. you got to have some guys that are like that. They're just going to take a dude to the sideline, put him on the ground. This was a first-round playoff game. Uh, we shouldn't have been able to do this with, with guys like this, and, and it's just pure determination. I am not going to let you beat. So it's good body position, good posture, good technique, and then finishing the play. And that's a heck of a finish right there. Here's a great look at it from the end zone as well. And you can see as they wheel, he sits. Right there, he's going to wheel. He's going to turn and run. Stay in him. Stay in that hip. Drive, drive, drive. Finish the daggum play. Man, guys, that gets me excited right there. That just, oh, man, I get goosebumps. That really gets me excited. Okay. Now, we talked about earlier when you're beat. I'm almost done, guys. Uh, we're getting towards our hour here. When you're beat, what do you do? Okay, we have to use a slingshot technique. Okay, so you want to use the man's downfield momentum to pull yourself back in. So, Punt returner, uh, punt return guy is the guy in red here. He's gotten beat inside by the guy in white. So I'm going to reach and grab low. You notice he beat me on number one, but at number two, I'm reaching and grabbing low, and I'm yanking back on him. It does two things. It slows him down a bit, but it propels me forward, and it brings me to be inside of him. And I'm gonna, once I get inside of him, I'm going to dip my inside shoulder and give him my back. My back is to him. I'm not going to get caught. Okay, I'm not going to get a hold. I'm not going to get a pull. And this is stuff that you can, again, work in cloth, and, and, and it's a slow progression, okay? I'm beat, so I've got to slingshot my way back inside. I'm trying to stay I'm trying to stay inside to the right of this guy, so I'm walking my guys through it. I want to teach him. He's gotten outside of me. Man, he got back inside of me. I reached. I grabbed low. I ripped through, and I get inside of him again, 
okay? It's important that they rip through because when you rip through with that inside arm, it helps pull you through, but it also puts your back to the guy uh, that's going downfield, that gunner. Again, it's a slow progression. He gets inside of me. I got a slingshot to get back inside. The guys are not going to get it the first time. They may not get it the second or third time. Work your way through it. Now, what I tell my kids is this. I'd rather it be slow and correct than fast and wrong. All right? And we're going to work it again and again and again. Oh, he got inside of me. And this is a great job. Dylan does a great job here yanking. You can see him pull cloth, but he's grabbing the bottom of Frank's shirt. All right, and he's ripping through, hand to the, hand to the sky, giving, him, giving his back, and now he's back inside where he needs to be. Block technique. So we've talked about having a hold up. We're going to bring a block in. So this week we're running against shield punt. I like to bring the block from one side, okay? So my fast guy, instead of forcing now, becomes a block guy. I've got one, two, three, four coming from this side to block. The left side, the opposite from the block side, is still going to run hold up. Okay, so if you're not on the block side, you're running hold up regardless. Uh, my check guy here now becomes a force player. I'm not going to let the punter roll away from the block and, and try and run the ball. I'll make a tackle. But he becomes my scoop and score guy. If eight or nine block this ball, the ball is likely going to bounce off to this side. Two should be there to scoop and score. So we want to bring the block from one side. Sometimes it's the right side. Sometimes it's the left side. Sometimes we just may go up the middle. It depends on what they offer that week, and it's on you as the coach to make sure that you are getting in that kind of scout work. All right, stance is extremely important. Drive. You have to drive into guys. And my drive into the opponent can't be any different for block than it is for hold up. I've got to show them the same thing with a different finish. All right, I want to be skinny in the hole. What does that mean? I can't go through the whole square, the A gap, the B gap, the C gap, wherever square, and expect to get past blockers. I have to dip my uh, hips, dip my shoulders, rip, get vertical, and rip through so I've gotten skinny in the hole and you're not giving them a lot of service area to block. If I'm going to block the ball, I have to have my eyes on the ball, and I have to see the ball off the foot to my hands. Just like as I'm a receiver watching the ball coming in, I'm seeing my hands go to catch it, I'm going to see that ball off the foot to my hand and watch myself block it. I don't need to keep my eyes on the punter. Keep your eyes on the ball. All right, so uh, I like to do this early in the season with a soccer ball, okay? I've got my punter back here, uh, and we're tossing him soccer balls. Soccer balls are great because, number one, they're super bright. Number two, they're a bigger ball. Number three, they're a little bit softer for an easy kick. So I've got guys – i got a simulated snap. I've got a guy coming off the edge and bending for the block. And he's going to block that soccer ball. Hands out, eyes on the ball. Got the next one up. It's that fast. Hands out, eyes on the ball. Didn't, didn't have eyes on the ball there. Next guy up. It's that fast. You've got a couple extra kids helping. Eyes on the ball. This is a great job by my blocker right here. Hands up. Watches through his hands to the ball. Bats that thing down. Okay? and then follows up on it. Coming from the other side. Boom, hands up, eyes aren't on the ball. If a kid misses, it's because he's not watching the ball. He doesn't have his eyes on the ball. And I'm just working my way down the line right here. We can go through this two or three times. Oh, we're not ready. Okay, got to make sure that they're ready. Your center's got to know when to give that simulated snap. Eyes aren't on the ball. Hands are not up where they need to be. I don't like his get off. He's not working very hard, okay? So we can go from uh, being a very close distance doing this drill to being at distance when the punter's at 13 to 15 yards. Still doing this drill. I still have kids helping shag balls. You, can't, you can have kids. You can have coaches help with that. All right, so we're going to get that simulated snap. We're going to bend that thing, looking for that ball. Eyes weren't on the ball. Okay, eyes weren't on the ball. Next guy up. Eyes on the ball right there. Very good. Good get off. Hands out. Eyes on the ball. And follow through. Next guy up. Eyes on the ball right there. Great job. He didn't take the ball in the midsection. He took the ball in his hands because he had his eyes on the ball the whole time. Uh, That's a great kid right here. Good young man. I was very proud of the coach uh, right there. Next guy up. Boom. Eyes on the ball. Okay. And we're going to work block to both sides. Because, hey, the left side might be doing it or the right side might be doing it. We don't know. It just depends on 
what they're giving us or what that scheme is going to be that week. Great job here. Good get off, hands out, eyes on the ball. Okay, it's extremely important we keep our eyes there. Good get off, eyes on the ball. Nope, not paying attention. Eyes got distracted. All right. Again, I like using soccer balls. This is an easy drill that you can do in cloth. You don't have to have pads to do this. So we line up for a block. The right side is going to come for the block. The left side, oh, this was a middle block, excuse me. But we've got kids getting through there. I've got hands going up, and I've got eyes on the ball, guys trying to get there. All right, now, if we're going to block, we are not going to be able to block for the returner. So your returner has got to be comfortable catching the ball and running in danger. Don't stutter step, man, just run. If he'd taken and run right here, if he'd stemmed and then gone outside, he'd have been in a lot better position. A six yard return is not great. Okay, we've got one more here. Okay, this is a right, uh, right block or left side is holding up. We've got guys down here getting in and holding up. Uh, we've got our outside guy here coming and checking, scoop and score if we get the block. Right side's coming off for the block. We don't get there, okay? So, hey, and you'll see out of our returner uh, here on the end zone view, or the returner has got to understand if this is not a fieldable ball, he has to go towards the ball. Now, watch his hands. He's going to wave everybody off. I have to go towards the ball and visually tell people, get away from it. Peter, 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 snake, 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 whatever you guys use as your terminology. Wave them off visually speak it, be loud about it, yelling it, and then I'm going to get away from the ball. Okay, and if any of our guys happen to be down there and they don't see or hear, then, then I, I don't know how to help them with that one. Okay, but visually showing them, waving off the ball, stay away from it. Smart football play right there. Auditory showing them, telling them, hey, Peter, 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 snake, snake, snake. That's it right there. Guys, that's all I've got for you today. Again, I'm very grateful for uh, you guys having me this afternoon. I know I know I probably went a little bit over my hour. I can get a little long-winded, but I get very excited about punt return and kickoff return, special teams in general. Um, here's my information, my email, and my Twitter. Uh, those are our two hashtags that we use um, at, at Clements High School uh, as the Rangers. Please feel free to email me or, or add me on Twitter. I'd love to add some of you guys back or DM me on Twitter. Um, I'd be very happy to, uh, to connect with you guys that way. I mean, that's, that's how we got hooked up in this time. Um, thank you guys so much. Hope that you guys are, are staying safe and, uh, and, and your families are healthy and everything. Um, and thanks a bunch for, for having me out today. Hey coach, thank you very much for that yep. detailed uh, presentation you gave us. Um, we've got one question if you like to, Answer. Absolutely, please. The coach asked if uh, have you ever used the uh, a punt return with two punt returners backed up deep? Absolutely. So, and you know that's a personnel choice. Um, and, and there, if you have a, a punter that that is not consistent and he's all over the place, and you feel like you can pull a guy off the front uh, and put him back in the back to help return, by all means, do it. Um, if you have Uh, if you don't have a very strong punt returner and, and you need to have more than one guy back there and that fits your personnel better, by all means, go ahead and, uh, and put two punt returners back. And, and I would, at that point, I would probably pull one of my guys um, off, of, off of the line or one of the linebackers off of whoever was going to pick up one of the up backs in the, the situation we were looking at with the shield punt. Um, and pull that guy off and put an extra returner out there. You know, um, absolutely. There, there are times to go with a single. There are times to go with a double. A lot of that really just depends on the personnel that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great, coach. And I think you you underlined how how important are techniques and individual times for for special teams, not only for the specialists but also for for all the other guys. And I think that's that's something we we uh, definitely should implement into our year-round plan on specialty. Absolutely. And, you know, get, you know, I, I was doing a lot of the work there on my own, but we, uh, we have a specialty period every day. And mm -hmm. the only coaches that are not involved in helping with that are the offensive and defensive coordinators and the O-line and D-line coaches. Mm -hmm. All of the skill coaches, including the quarterback's coach, the head coach, 
get them involved, give them a specific to job to do. Maybe the head coach is putting the scout team together or my receivers coach is working with the returners in the back while I'm working with the front six on kickoff return. Spread the wealth, spread the work because you can't do it all by yourself. So get all of the coaches involved, let the, you know, teach them what you want, show them some video of what you want if you've got it uh, and then let them help and let them assist as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great, Coach. So, um, if we don't have any other questions, um, it's up to me to uh, say thank you to you for your great presentation. You you helped us to get better today, and um, I hope you stay safe during this time. And it's it's good for you and for all of us to get back to football now. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Y'all be blessed and have a great day. Yeah, Coach. Goodbye. See you soon. Thank you guys. Bye.